everyone, it's Annie, and today I'm here to do my August TBR. As you may know, I am co-hosting the Avatar The Last Airbender Readathon during the first two weeks of August, so this is mostly going to be my TBR for that, and I am very excited for it. <laughs> I am personally not doubling up on any prompts, or at least I hope not to, so here we go. The first book is our group book, Rise of Kyoshi, about the Earthbender warrior queen avatar, Kyoshi. I honestly cannot believe that I have waited this long to read this book because I remember when Avatar was airing, I really wanted to know more about Kyoshi. And like, this is the chance. It's right here and it's been out and I just haven't read it. <laughs> So it's time to remedy that. It's time to read it, and I am so excited to read it with everyone. So I am the host of the Waterbender team for the readathon. So the first prompt for my team is to read a book with a central sibling relationship. Now, we're already starting off with me not being sure. <laughs> because there are two books that I am interested in. The first is Twelfth Night by Shakespeare. I try to read one Shakespeare play a year just because, I don't know, I feel like I want to do that and it might be good to do. I don't know. If I ever go on Jeopardy, I'll know Shakespeare plays. <laughs> so this obviously has a central sibling relationship and also it fits the Buzzwordathon prompt for a time of day, you know, night. And I recently read The Last True Poets of the Sea in my sapphic vlog and it's actually a, like a retelling of Twelfth Night, which I didn't know going into it. So I think that's pretty perfect, and I should probably read Twelfth Night now that I have read that. And also, this has always been the Shakespeare play I have been most interested in because it involves... I actually don't really know the plot, but it involves this ship <laughs> and these twins. I think they're twins. I don't know boy and a girl, and the boy is like presumed drowned or something, so the girl assumes his identity and dresses as this boy, her brother, and things ensue, and it just sounds very, very interesting and like nothing I have ever read before, so I definitely would like to check it out, even if not this month, eventually, by the end of the year, I am going to read it. But my other choice for this prompt would be Wing Jones. This is a book that I remember so clearly sitting in my high school library looking at it and being like, oh, first of all, I love this cover, <laughs> and second of all, this sounds super interesting, but I just never got around to it and I graduated and that was that. So this book is about a Ghanaian Chinese girl and she likes to run. She's like on her school track team or something, but then her older brother, who she's always been very close with and has always been kind of the favorite of the family, gets involved in a drunk driving accident and kills someone. So Wing has to grapple with that, grapple with her changing relationship with her brother and just the grief that her family is feeling and the backlash from everyone in their community because her brother did this horrible thing and I think it sounds very interesting. And it's a sports book, which I, for some reason, I like, even though I don't like sports. And I am just super interested in reading this and finally getting it off my TBR after all of these years. The next prompt for the Waterbender team is to read a book with a blue cover. Now, obviously, I have a ton of choices for this. And to tell you the truth, this choice is probably not final. <laughs> But I am very interested in reading Summer Bird Blue, which would be my first book by this author, which I am very excited about. So the synopsis is Rumi Seto spends a lot of time worrying that she doesn't have the answers to everything. But there's one thing she is sure of. She wants to spend the rest of her life writing music with her younger sister. But then her younger sister dies in a car accident and she is sent away to live with her aunt in Hawaii while she deals with her grief. So now that she is thousands of miles from her home and feeling abandoned by her family, she has to struggle to navigate the loss of her sister with the help 
of the boys next door. One is a teenage surfer and the other is an 80 year old man. <laughs> so I am mostly interested in this book, first of all, because of the author and all of her books just sound gorgeous and I have always wanted to read them, but I just never have. But specifically this one because it has Ace Rep in the main character and I need to read more books with that. So I am really hoping to get to this soon and it's summer. What better time to read a book with summer in the title, you know? So I'm really hoping to read this one. The next prompt is to read a book with the moon, either on the cover or in the title. I also am unsure about this one, but the two that I am thinking about reading, the first one is The Girl Who Drank the Moon, which is a super popular middle grade that I really, really want to read. The basic story that I understand is that this town sacrifices a baby to the witch of the forest every year or something, and this witch doesn't understand why they're doing this. Like, she thinks that they're just horrible people who are abandoning their kids, so she takes care of them, and she usually feeds them starlight. But this girl named Luna, she accidentally fed moonlight, which gives her magical powers. And it just sounds so good, so magical, like the perfect atmosphere. I feel like I would love this so much. But the other one that I am thinking of reading is Cemetery Boys. <laughs> I don't know if this is really the right time. Maybe I should wait for like Halloween, but I don't know. We'll see. It has the moon on the cover and I've been wanting to read it for a long time. So this is about a trans boy who is trying to become a brujo, but his family don't recognize his identity and they don't believe that he can do this. So he goes out on his own to complete the ceremony, but he kind of succeeds in raising from the dead the high school bad boy. <laughs> it just sounds kind of ridiculous, but in the best way possible. And that's all I know about it. I don't know anything else. And I kind of want to keep it that way. I want to go in not knowing too much. So I am going to choose between these. Let me know which one you think I should choose. So the last book I am planning to read for the Avatar Readathon is for the prompt a book with a snowy or polar setting. Now this book is also going to be counted for a secret TBR vlog that I am doing. So let me know your guesses for what this secret TBR is going to be because I'm really excited about it. But this book is A Winter's Promise, which I am also really happy because it is a translated work, translated from French, so that's awesome. This book, I actually have not read the synopsis. <laughs> Long ago, following a cataclysm called the Rupture, the world was shattered into many floating celestial islands. Known now as arcs, each has developed in distinct ways, and each seems to possess its own unique relationship to time. Oh such that nowadays vastly different worlds exist, together but apart. All over the arcs, the spirit of an omnipotent ancestor abides. Ophelia lives on Anima, an arc where objects have souls. Beneath her worn scarf and thick glasses, the young girl hides the ability to read and communicate with the souls of objects, and the power to travel through mirrors. Interesting. Her peaceful existence on the Ark of Anima is disrupted when she is promised in marriage to Thorn from the powerful Dragon Clan. Ophelia must leave her family and follow her fiancé to the floating capital on the distant Ark of the Pole. Why has she been chosen? Why must she hide her true identity? Though she doesn't know it yet, she has become a pawn in a deadly plot. Interesting. I know this is the first book in a series, and I also know it kind of has a little bit of mixed reviews sometimes, but I have always been interested in it and I just feel like it's totally magical and kind of giving me Ghibli vibes. So I am very interested in this and if you have read this, please let me know what you think because I really want to like it. <laughs> the next book in this secret TBR is Semiosis by Sue Burke. I am very excited to read this because it is a first contact story. Yes! I love aliens. You know this. I just, uh, I love it so much. Okay, so the general premise of this book 
is obviously First Contact. It involves a bunch of humans that kind of crash land on a planet that they don't really know anything about, and it is hospitable one day and inhospitable the next, and they find like mysterious alien runes, and they have to grapple with a alien intelligence that they don't understand, and that's all I know about it. It sounds great. I need a good sci-fi first contact story. <laughs> so I am very excited for this. And the last book in The Secret to VR is Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. I am so excited to finally read this. It is such a popular fantasy, obviously. And here is the synopsis. They killed my mother. <laughs> they took our magic. They tried to bury us. Now we rise. The main character, whose name I don't no, Zeli, Zeli, remembers when the soil of Orisha hummed with magic. Burners ignited flames, tiders beckoned waves, and Zeli's reaper mother summoned forth souls. Ooh. But everything changed the night magic disappeared. <laughs> Under the orders of a ruthless king, magi were killed, leaving Zeli without a mother and her people without hope. Now Zeli has one chance to bring back magic and strike against the monarchy. With the help of a rogue princess, Zeli must outwit and outrun the crown prince who is hellbent on eradicating magic for good. Interesting. So this sounds like it has like interesting elemental magic, which I am here for, especially because of the Avatar readathon. It just sounds awesome, and I'm excited to finally get to this super popular fantasy. The last book of this TBR is a buddy read with Brit from Slanted Spines. I am so excited to be reading this with her. It is She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. Yes, I am so excited for this book. It is described as Song of Achilles meets Mulan. Could a book be any more perfect? Like, oh my gosh, this sounds amazing. It is a lyrical, queer, bold reimagining of the rise of the founding emperor of the Ming Dynasty. Sounds awesome. I do know that the main character is like a gender non-conforming sapphic character, which is so cool. And so the basic synopsis is that there is the son and daughter of this family, and the son is given the fate of greatness, and the daughter is given the fate of nothingness, which is like pretty expected because that's what daughters are. They're not worth as much as boys in this society. And she refuses this because there is a raid in her village and her parents are killed and her brother who is supposed to be great succumbs to grief and dies and she rises up and basically takes his identity and takes his fate as well so i probably i don't know i can't speak today that was not really very eloquent but uh, she's mulan i don't know it's gonna be cool I've heard that it's pretty violent and graphic, so I don't know. I feel like that's fine. I read The Puppy War and it was also pretty violent and graphic, so we'll, we will see. And I think I'm going to love this. And also, if you're participating in the Avatar Readathon, which you should, this would be great for the fire team. <laughs> Even though that's not my team, but you know, whatever. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, a little bit chaotic, I didn't really prepare that much, but it was fun nonetheless. I am so hyped for the Avatar Readathon, please check out the announcement video and join us, please, we'd love to have you, and let me know down below what you're planning on reading for August. Thank you very much, if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe to my channel for more bookish videos. I'll see you next time, bye!